let's try again. Ah, I'm glad I could see the comments. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Ah, oh, can you hear me now? I'm going to see if I can, you can hear me now. Like sound check, testing, testing, one, two, three. Yay, it worked. I just had to reboot my my computers. I think something was off that is normally on. We were having a really weird thing happening with Zoom yesterday. I don't know if anyone's ever had this, but literally like clockwork, every 10 minutes, it was freezing uh, just for about 15 seconds, but creating a little bit of uh, wonkiness. <laughs> having our call on IPC, we'd be mid-conversation with everybody and then suddenly it would freeze and we're like, oh, now we know what's happened. So I'm hoping it's not going to do that now so we can we can time it. Um, so if it freezes, then I haven't fixed the problem. <laughs> Uh, and if it doesn't freeze in 10 minutes time, then I have fixed the problem. Yay! So I'm hoping I've managed to fix it because um, it was doing it for our podcast recordings as well. So I've given our editor a few problems in um, having to get that all, all, you know, as smooth as you possibly can. Anyway, welcome. We have done a sound check. It is working. I can see your comments. So yes, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for being my sound check buddies as well for those of you that help me out there with the with the with the sound check so we are talking about mastering money kinesiology for aligned success so that you can unlock your subconscious mind really want everyone to understand what it takes to break through i'm going to introduce you to the helix method and for those of you, some of you I know will have experienced the Helix Method. Some of you will be new to it. We cover a range of techniques in the, in the, in the Helix Method um, to ultimately elevate your consciousness and your vibration so that your energy can do the, do the heavy lifting for you. And if you want to go deeper after today, then do come and join us in our free masterclass next week, which is Breakthrough the Money Ceiling. This is our 15th edition. I'm so excited. And we've had over 6,000 CEOs, entrepreneurs that have taken part in this masterclass since it's been running. And then hundreds come on to, to join us in our program. So I just love sharing this with everybody. So it's my highest honor to gift you a, gift you a spot. And for those of you that are new to me and getting to know me, I'm just going to share a little bit about my story. I'm going to just tag everybody here so they can see that we are live. And now we've got the sound working and everything. Share a little bit about my stories. So you're getting to know me. And then um, I'm going to introduce what we're going to be up to today. So let me know, are you ready to master money kinesiology for your aligned success? Let me know in the comments. And let me know if you have come and join us for our Breakthrough the Money Ceiling Masterclass before. I'd love to know that. As you're letting, letting me know. I'm just going to share a little bit about my my background. So I used to be a senior manager in social services, and I did that for it was around 30, it was 13 years, actually, and led on developing multi-million pound services. And I did. I loved the auto autonomy that we had, what I could create and helping people to flourish. And within all of that, the bit that I really loved doing the most was coaching people and seeing people expand beyond what they originally thought was possible. And that's the most exciting bit for me as people start to live beyond the initial vision. And I, you know, there were two key turning points for me along my journey when I look back. So the first one was, you know, my father's death in 2004 when he was ill health retired. He died after a long period of ill health. And so he never really got the retirement that he planned for. He'd been saving up, for, you know, to do all these things that he was, you know, I'm going to do this when I retire. I'm going to do that when I retire. And it didn't quite pan out how he had hoped. And this started gnawing away at me. And I just felt like, you know, I was actually doing the same thing. I was repeating a pattern. I'm on the corporate hamster wheel. I'm likely to end up the same if I don't take, you know, massive, bold action and find out what I really wanted to do in my life and to, you know, and do it. And the second one was we had pay freezes that we'd had in social services for about eight years. Let me know if there's anyone from the public sector here. Big shout out to you if you've ever worked in the public sector. So, but the pay freezes that we had at that point in time uh, when I was there had been going on for about eight years. And that just kicked me into gear because it was, I had to be creative about how I could give myself a pay rise because 
the company weren't going to give me one. They were just giving me more work to do, more work and no more money, you know. And of course, the cost of living was going up and all, all of the, that stuff that we're all, you know, very well aware of. And so I've been living in the energy of the question of like, I want my own business, but what can it be? You know, I didn't realize I was kind of manifesting at that, that point in time, manifesting the perfect opportunity. But I was literally just living in the question and being curious about it. And it just came to me. This opportunity came to me within a few weeks. It was a health and wellness network marketing opportunity was shared with me. And I was like, oh, my God, that's it. I've been, I've been thinking about this question. And, and here is the solution. This is amazing. <laughs> it was perfect for me at that point in time because I could fit it in around the full time job and the kids. And I didn't have to commute or go anywhere. I could do it from home and it just opened up my mindset to being able to do things in a different way. And it really did do that because within a year I'd given myself the pay rise that I was looking for. I was then able to reduce my hours at work and then started to make that transition out of the employment employment that I was in into having my own coaching business. And when I say start to make that transition, it did take three years (laughs) to go through all of that process. So when I finally left, What really surprised me was what came up for me was around my identity. And at the time, I thought, I'm handling this really badly. But actually, everything that came up for me was the usual part of transitioning from one identity to another identity. Does that make sense? Have As you've changed identities along your journey, how has it flowed for you? Was it easy? Have you tried to hang on to an old identity? Has it felt really like what on earth is going on? And for me, you know, I'd done the sensible things like negotiating redundancy so I could have income to support my family you know whilst I started to grow my business and I've been growing my network marketing business so that I had some income stream coming in whilst I was you know uh, doing that transition point so I've done all those practical things so that I could feel safe the thing was I was absolutely terrified but my soul was calling me so I knew I had to do it that the pull was stronger than the the resistance if that makes sense my desire just got stronger and stronger in terms of I just have to do this I didn't want to be waiting for my pension which is what I saw a lot of my colleagues doing Um, that just wasn't for me I wanted to experience a different life and I just wanted to you know see what was possible along that journey so I threw myself into it got support from business coaches I got certified in a number of energy alignment and healing modalities so that I could help my clients to have you know better and better results anybody else here addicted to learning to growing let me know in the comments I just absolutely love love it and and cannot stop learning and growing and for me I just really opened myself up to this whole new world that was just so different from where I had come from you know in in the public sector what I hadn't anticipated as I transitioned was the challenge of moving from one identity to the next. I actually had huge grief for my old identity after I left. I felt like I was unanchored as I no longer had this role that I had attached to my identity. So who who was I? You know, who was I really? And it was a real shock to recognize that I had just wrapped myself up, my whole identity in with the, in with this, and enmeshed it really in with this role. So the moment that role was taken away, it was like, ah, who am I? So it was a huge piece for me. But then when I look back, you know, I know I, I contracted back in that beginning phase. I took many actions for my business that weren't in alignment with who I was. And so, you know, I was having to learn so many different skills, really finding my feet, and I wasn't embodied in the identity identity of being a self-employed business owner running a successful business. Does that make sense? And this is the thing, you know, we, I see so many people growing their businesses. I see people who started their businesses the same time as me and get, have given up. I've seen people who started their businesses the same t- time as me and have gone, you know, grown multi-million pound businesses. Everybody's got their own journey along the way. The key thing that I see with my clients and with colleagues is around this embodiment piece. We need to teach our bodies to know what it feels like to be our future self so that the cells of your body know what it feels like to be that version of you. Then it is inevitable that you will become that. It starts with your vision of self and then recreating your identity. 
So there's two key pieces within this, you know, breaking through these upper limits, breaking through these glass ceilings. It, you have the breakthrough and then you've got the holding it so that you don't contract back and create a, a little roller coaster of emotions and experiences that perhaps you, you don't want. So it's changing your identity, emotions and beliefs. Ultimately, it will change your actions, changing your perception and expectation of your reality as well. And when you can unlock your subconscious, which is held in your body. And so this is why muscle testing is just such a great way to, you know, find out what is really going on. Not listening to the stories that you're telling yourself, but finding out what's really going on in your subconscious so that you can change your vibrational attraction point because the body will pull you back to what's familiar. And if I think back, and I share this, so you can see where you may have done this, because we will have all have done this, and it's not until it's in our awareness that we're then able to do something about it, if that makes sense. And I remember a client fairly recently, she was reflecting on her breakthrough. She'd had her first 100K month. She was in the wealth portal, working with us in the wealth portal. And one of the things she'd reflected to us was that typically her Facebook ads were really difficult. They always got challenged that they were, you know, um, not allowed and they were just really awkward and and, and difficult to, to, to get working. And as her vibrational attraction point was changing and she, this 100K month came in, suddenly her Facebook ads were easy. And she said what was really weird was how she was finding it really awkward and difficult to navigate the ease. Does that make sense? It was like it was, I'm, I know what to do when the Facebook ads aren't working, so that's easier than being in this space where everything's working. Does that make sense? And this feeling easier. So we have to learn to hold this new vibrational frequency of ease so that that becomes embodied. That's our new identity. It our cells and know how to feel, feel it and to hold that frequency to fully embody it. Otherwise, our body just wants to go back to what's familiar the old Facebook ads not working and just using that as an example. Does that resonate? Let me know in the comments if, if that resonates. And also thinking about where has that happened for you, where you've gone, you've had a breakthrough, things start feeling easier. And how did your body feel? Did you hold it? Did you contract back? Did you recreate some old patterns? What, what cooked up for you? Let me know in the comments. Welcome those of you who are just joining us as well. So the body's going to pull you back to familiarity right down to, you know, because of what's going on in your cells. And money, it's just it's just such a hot topic, isn't it? Because it, it can be the biggest source of stress for, for so many people, so many entrepreneurs, CEOs. So thinking about this and as you look back over your life, what if we do a quick pulse check? What's been your biggest stressor in life when you think about things that have bubbled up, whether it's been health, wealth, relationships, family members? This could include people passing on. Moving home is another big one as well, isn't it? So divorce, divorce, moving home, grief, money, health. What have been some of the biggest, biggest stresses? And has money been one of them? Or have you been blessed to be like, Do you know what, actually, money's always been good. My money consciousness has always been fantastic. It's never been a you know stressful, sticky thing. The business is flourishing. I want to keep it that way. You know, always taking care of your money consciousness. And, you know, we are all blessed as a collective overall to be living longer. And... When we think about moving into, for those of us that are lucky enough to, to retire and to move into old age, thinking about how we want to have set ourselves up financially so that we can have the quality of life that we desire when we when we get to that point. Many retirees have to reduce their quality of life because of their finances or work longer to survive. We don't want to survive. We want to thrive or find you know additional employment when they actually, if they had the cash, they wouldn't really do that. And money, you know, we've got many men in the community as well. Money is a huge stress 
for you know both men and women but from different aspects in terms of these archetypal programs that we're carrying you know men are sort of the some programs where men are just expected to know how to handle money or they might feel like a fraud if they don't naturally know how to handle money women maybe have less money invested than men do because of the di- the the dynamics in society women might be more uncertain about their financial future or feel like they might have to rely on someone else to survive so we really we want to change this and we can do this because you know we're entrepreneurs here we actually get to create our own economy and this is it it comes down to frequency first it really does being able to create that aligned success in business and marketing in alignment with your energy so I invite you to think of your energy as a strategy. And for me, you know, aligned success is that feeling that all aspects of business growth are aligned. All aspects of life are aligned. There's not not a sacrifice where one's sacrificing something for the other aspect of life. Does that make sense? So you want a personal life aligned, our business aligned. So we have that balance and harmony in all areas of life. So there's a whole there's a whole load of stuff going on in our in our personal energy fields and in our different levels of consciousness. And for me, you know, having aligned success is it's about mastering the energetics so that when you're implementing strategies, your energetic vibration is supporting you and doing the heavy lifting, as it were, for you. And it starts with an embodied identity in alignment with all levels of your consciousness that's in resonance and an energetic match to that which you desire. It's your identity that creates the paradigms and the concepts. So think of concepts as viewpoints and groups of beliefs and that these beliefs and your emotions and your feelings inform your behavior and action and then the experiences feed back and reinforce those behaviors and emotions and beliefs and concepts in your identity. So altogether, that little bundle is creating your reality. So I see it like a feedback loop, you know, what we're vibrating out in our human aura, ultimately from our identity and our consciousness, and then attracting back to us through reality. And we we continue to do so without conscious change to what we want to create unless we are consciously doing that. It's in our consciousness that that's where we need to take that consideration of what is it that we really want to create so that we can change what we're creating so if you think of your consciousness and you may have heard me speak about this before if you've been around me for a while in our community for a while so our conscious mind is where we're intentional and where we have choice where we choose and then our subconscious is this vast collection of unintentional habitual thoughts behaviors values actions our identity and this is the piece that has the biggest impact on our outcomes when we're disconnected from our higher self I think of three layers of consciousness for our discussion today. So our subconscious mind is actually the one that's running the show, even though our conscious mind thinks it is. But it's all a whole lot better when our higher self is running the show rather than the subconscious. And here's the thing. All of this is affecting our electromagnetic waves that we're sending out into the universe. The emotional state that you're in is affecting your electromagnetic waves. But this is what I call your human Wi-Fi, that frequency and vibration that you're sending out into the universe. And so all the reasons why we're wanting what business growth is held in our conscious mind and then all the reasons why, why on earth we wouldn't is held in our subconscious mind. And what we really need is our higher self on board for our manifesting, because if we're out of alignment with our higher self, then this is where the the conscious mind and the subconscious can have this sort of push pull feeling going on. Has anyone had that sensation where you feel like you're moving two steps forwards and then one step back? You're like, what is going on? This is feeling really, really frustrating. <laughs> Does that make sense? And the thing is, you know, as we we will feel fear, fear bubbles up when we start to get more of what we want because we've stepped outside of our comfort zone what have we done when we stepped outside of our comfort zone we've actually stepped outside of the end identity that we're embodying and so our subconscious is gonna start screaming at us giving you all the reasons why 
not to allow the success in. So the strategy is consistently to take care of your energy, to take care of your mindset and to lead with higher levels of consciousness. And for me, the quickest way to do this is, you know, focusing on your identity, who you be, who you are being, who you're embodying, because we create our reality in line with our identity and the subconscious beliefs and programs that we're running. And by consciously creating your identity, you're then able, you're creating the consciousness of your future self. You're letting go and transmuting the energetic imprints and charges of old versions of yourself. Of course, you get to keep those pieces of you along the way, but they're not running the show, the show anymore. So you're creating from the place, the identity, the self-concepts, the beliefs and the emotions as if you've already, already done the thing that you want to do. I love Lee. This is actually where the core work is done, clearing the sticky emotions, working through the split energy, changing paradigms. That's where you ena it enables you to embody this and to become a vibrational match. And part of the identity work is finding out what you truly value so you can have balance in all areas of your life, living in alignment with your values as your, as your future self would. So it's kind of thinking beyond that initial piece. Like if you're wanting to manifest and to, let's say you want to work with two more clients this week, what would you be thinking about if you were already working with two more clients? Because you wouldn't be thinking about working with the two clients because <laughs> you already are. Does that make sense? That's how you get the quantum, quantum leaps. And a super simple way to see if you're resisting your future self is finding this, the energetic block. That's the key to unlocking it. So you can allow yourself to move forward with more ease. And this is where muscle testing is just like magic at being able to find out what is going on in the subconscious. The key is asking the right questions. This is a big caveat. Um, and we're really being able to master kinesiology, which is the art of muscle testing that we use within the Helix method. This is where you can really be leaps and bounds ahead of taking care of your energetic vibrational frequency than those that aren't so my first tip is to focus on your identity to to change your vibrational attraction point the second tip is to consciously work with your subconscious so you can find the hidden resistances and you know where you're masking who you truly are and that the easiest way is through is through muscle testing. And the one that I love to do is the sway technique. There's a number of different techniques you can use. I love using the sway technique because it helps you to open up your intuition, helps you to connect. You feel the energy as you're going backwards and forwards. I'll explain what it is in a second for those of you that don't know. And so because you can feel the energy, you're kind of more connected. Your body is more connected with the experience. If that makes sense. So let me know in the comments which muscle testing you've used before have you used the sway technique have you used interlocking fingers have you used the wrist resistance what have you used There's, there are a number of different ways of doing this with the sway technique you use your body like a dousing device your body will respond to what's held in your energetic fields you literally sway forwards for a yes and backwards for a no and you, you instruct your subconscious as you're doing this so you would literally say to yourself, right, I'll show you how to do this in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be like, right, yes is telling myself, I'm just speaking to my subconscious now. Yes is a forwards and backwards is a no. And uh, you know, and if you've used a pendulum for dousing, you'll be familiar with this. So what you're doing here is using your body for dousing. So what you can do, you can do this sitting down as well. It is easy, you'll feel it more if you do it standing up. So I recommend doing this standing up. I'll demonstrate just sitting down because I'm in a small space here. And oh, so we've got people doing different things, sway and dousing. Yes, sway is a fave, sway, fingers and arms, all the things. I love it, fingers and sways. <laughs> this is awesome. Fantastic. What's your favorite then? So Ali's saying her fave is the sway. Georgia, what's your what's your favorite? So if you give yourself a quick thymus thump, which is just tapping here for 15 seconds if you haven't done this before, and then tell yourself that you're going to go forwards and backwards for a no. So what I invite you to do is to do this standing up if you are able to stand, have your knees slightly soft, 
feet, um, feet hip width apart, hands by your side to close your eyes, just so that you're like you're going within for meditation. And then just to create a baseline muscle testing so you can kind of know what your normal is with things that you know to be true. So, for example, it might be. I live in such and such a road. I am 49 years old. That's my real age. <laughs> my name is Louise Havers. So for all of these, I'll go forwards on. Then if you're going to start saying things that you know not to be true. And then just see how your body responds with those, if that makes sense. And you can also do it with uh, if you were to stand there in that position with your eyes closed and just to say, yes, 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 yes you'll start going forwards. And if you'd say no, 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 you'll start going backwards. So again, you can just feel that baseline of how it feels for you before you start trying to find out what is going on in your subconscious. And then the monkey mind going, are you doing it right? <laughs> You're making this up. <laughs> All the things it's going to do to try and stop you from um, getting to the root of uh, of the, the belief and the thoughts that have been holding you back. That, so that's how you do muscle testing. And then after you've kind of done your baseline is then being able to, this is where it's just the power of it is incredible, being able to really understand. Okay, so this is how I can find out using this muscle testing, what's going on in my subconscious. And the important things here to just to mention is we have different layers of beliefs. And so you can hold split beliefs. So you could have, you could believe Two beliefs that would seem like, how can I have both those beliefs? They're contradictory. You could believe I'm worthy of, let's say, I'm worthy of having 10K months consistently and believe I'm unworthy of having 10K months consistently. Now, if you were to muscle test those, you'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> it's not working. I've got two contradictory beliefs that can't be right. Yes, it can. Because one of those beliefs may have been created, the root of that in childhood, for example, and the other one is popping in from a past life. And so this is where really being able to master the art of uh, kinesiology and, and how to ask the questions. This is what we get up to in the Helix Method so that you can have complete confidence in being able to use this just gift of being able to work with yourself to really, you know, develop that trust with yourself and to know how you can what needs to change in your consciousness so that you can change it and then change your reality does that make sense and the other thing to mention is of course if we've got those split beliefs like I'm the one like example I gave you was I'm worthy of having 10k months consistently and I'm unworthy of having 10k months consistently then it's going to create that pushable energy because you haven't got the the coherence going out in your energy field and so what that might look like, just to kind of bring it into day to day life. Is you feeling like, well, I've been working on this for so long. Sometimes I feel like it's just about there. And then, oh. I find myself procrastinating on something or just don't feel like doing it anymore. Does that make sense? Has anyone ever felt that where. You're close to having the thing that you say you desire. Or perhaps you've started having the thing that you say you desire and then you've lost motivation. Or finding yourself procrastinating or something's bubbled up where you're like, why am I doing this? What, what is going on? So once we what we need to do is to identify the root cause of the energetic block. And then once we've done that, we can then you know dissolve it, which is my third tip for for. Mastering this is doing inner rewiring activations. And the key here is being really, really intentional around this because the, the, the first layer is dissolving the resistance is, is through awareness and observing the resistance. Now, oh, isn't that interesting? That is just resistance that's bubbled up. It's not who you are. It's just a protection mechanism. And immediately when you do that, you can just detract, you know, detach it from you. Go, oh. I'm observing resistance right now <laughs> and it can come up, you know, in procrastination, distraction, disinterest, suddenly just not being interested in the, you know, the thing that you've been passionate about for years or creating drama within your business or feeling, you know, discomfort or perhaps you might be feeling irrational fear 
overwhelm? Is this resonating for you? Let me know in the comments. These are sharing these because these are subconscious classics. It's the subconscious playlist for um, that can feel like it's on repeat as you're growing, growing your business. And the second piece is through, you know, being really intentional. So through the power of word, you're creating new thoughts through intention. So we do inner rewiring and outer rewiring, I call it, with, you know, thinking new thoughts and, and saying things out loud so that we've got that connection across the different layers of our auras. So, for example, the phrase that we use in the Helix method is if we were changing a belief that we found we're transmuting the energetic charge around it would be like i'm changing i'm transmuting this resistance across all levels of my consciousness i'm being really really intentional and we're going to do this together shortly so i'll guide i'll guide you through and the key thing here is using heart-centered breathing so you're bringing your heart and your brain and your hara which i'll talk more about next week but we're bringing those pieces of us into coherence. So we're sending out a coherent imprint into the quantum field, quantum coherence. And as you do that, your vibration is stronger. So you're sending out a stronger frequency, which makes manifesting a whole lot easier, your reality creation a whole lot easier. Uh, as you do that and then choose a new imprint, what you want to create, the belief that you want to hold, the belief that you want to embody, you choose to imprint that. And as you do so in that coherent state, it just creates magic in terms of what starts to come through for you. So intentionally affirming. Now, how I like to do this is saying it out loud once and then twice internally, because there's some things going on energetically that happen as you do that. So you're creating, increasing the vibration around the words as you're focusing on the breathing and saying it out loud and, and saying it internally. So it could be, for example, you know, I'm ready to have balance and harmony in my life. And I'm, I choose to create this across all dimensions, planes, times and levels of consciousness. Keeping that heart centered breathing going as you're imprinting this. So I'm excited to to guide you through this today and for those of you that want to and I think this will be everybody to develop their money consciousness because if you're here and you're growing a business then this is the most important thing that you can do for yourself is is growing and expanding your wealth consciousness so that you can make a bigger impact with your business so if you want to come and join us next week in the breakthrough the money ceiling Masterclass, that's where I will be your energy coach for the week and this is where we'll dive in deeper to this so I'm very, very excited to invite you to that. And, you know, for me, I'm always working on my money consciousness. It's, you know, it's frequency first. I have energetic wobbles like everybody and I have breakthroughs like everybody. You know, if I look back over, I was sharing my story with um, a lady this morning who's um, being interviewed for their platform. And she was asking me about my journey. And I was just reflecting, thinking, you know, being an entrepreneur has completely transformed my life, you know. Having got off the hustle of the corporate hamster wheel and then just being able to give more of my time to my family to be able to be with my sons more. And, that, you know, as a single parent, that is so huge to be able to to do that and to have more time to be with my elderly mother. I just feel so blessed that I had the courage to take that leap over six years ago. And then just to continue and continue and continue working on my, my money consciousness. You know, I don't feel like I'm missing out on, on things anymore in terms of missing out on my family, missing out on life for myself. And my family relationships are flourishing. And I've been able to give my eldest son a contract with us to be able to do our video editing for us. So he's been able to leave his chefing job, which has just been amazing. And that's just all come from creating this incredible business and being able to do what I absolutely love doing. Um, and so, you know, I think all entrepreneurs want to be able to make the impact that they want to make. And for us to be able to do that, we need to work on ourselves first, of course, don't we? And to be able to continue expanding our consciousness and for our energy to then be able to do the heavy lifting. I know for me, you know, when I when I haven't listened 
to myself and how my body has been speaking to me and I've taken action when I wasn't in alignment and I wasn't trusting myself it just hasn't produced the results that I desired does anyone else recognize that you know and, and when I look back the big one for me was one of my first business coaches that I invested in for my business and I I dutifully just did everything that I was told despite it feeling wrong in my body it was really early on in my business and I was investing large amounts of money in Facebook ads and because that's what we were encouraged to do. And I really hadn't mastered my messaging yet. And of course, when you haven't done that and you're, te you're testing it all out on Facebook ads and that's a huge cost. My body was saying no. My head was saying yes, because that's what everyone who is successful around me was doing. This is what the coach was telling me to do. And so I did it instead of being responsible for my results and really understanding what my gaps were and interpreting the coaching and adapting what I was learning so that it fitted with me. And I say this because we were in a coaching group and there was about 150 people in the group. So of course the coach didn't know where I was where I was at. That's why in my business coaching, I like to have a small group so I know exactly what's going on for everybody, where they're at, and I can advise them and tell them what to do depending on where they're at in their journey and who they are as well. Because what might fit one person is going to be completely inappropriate for someone else and their energy. Does that make sense? I truly believe there's lots of different ways to build a business and it's, you know, building one that's in alignment with who, who you be without resistance, without, without resistance getting in the way. And that can bubble up in so many different ways, you know? So for me with that, you know, it felt completely wrong, a wrong decision for my business, but I was contracted at the time. So I was making decisions from that, contracted space that misaligned space and whilst it worked clients were finding me we were creating over six figures in terms of revenue it just wasn't sustainable in terms of the profit margin that bit wasn't aligned for me and it was a time when you know Facebook were changing all their metrics and so the quality of the audiences had you know completely completely changed and ads were getting more expensive and and all the things so lots of emerging businesses were were taking a hit the bit I did learn, the gift in the challenges, was the art of emotional resilience and developing and learning and tweaking my marketing and testing and refining it until I got the results that I desired. I, I do see so many people just give up far too soon or simply replicating something that will never work for them because of who they are, where they be. And they're just trying to kind of follow something that perhaps they don't fully understand, if that makes sense. When we listen within, when we really listen and build our businesses in alignment with who we be, then things completely change and become so much easier. So for me, completely redesigned the business, moved to organic marketing at that point in time only, really learned to lean into myself, believe in myself, believe in my methods, faith in the universe, improve my relationship with trust, trusting the universe, trusting me, trusting the power of working with energy. Have you ever, this is, I'm going to ask you for a confession time, <laughs> have you ever so you know energy works, that's why you're here, you're watch watching this. Have you ever doubted it? Because the reality around you is looking like, hang on a second, I'm doing all the things, what is going on here? Why have I attracted this in, <laughs> whatever this might be? And then it chips away, it can chip away at that trust even though we know it works, we know it works when it's, when it's working and we're manifesting what we want. Of course, it's working even when we've got something we don't want. And this is where the opportunity for that development with, with self-trust. And being able to make that, those decisions, making decisions from a place that's expansive, not contractive. So making decisions, listening to the wisdom of the higher self, listening to the wisdom of the future self, who's already where you want to be. Where things flow, that's where things will flow and the results are often more exciting than you perhaps would have thought that they could possibly be in the first place. 
that makes sense. I truly believe that the world would be a much better place if everybody knew that their thoughts and emotions that were just bumbling around in their head aren't their true self. And they can get to know their true self when they connect in with their higher self and tap into different levels of consciousness and have that soul aligned success. So let's dive into unlocking some money blocks. Who's up for that? So that you can start to feel what it's like to master kinesiology for your aligned success. I've got a little handout for you. Let's pop this in the. Um, chat so anyone watching the replay you need to check the comments at about now okay got that there for you so let's dive into this just wanted to share so we've got run through six common hidden money blocks and there's lots and lots of hidden money blocks that I work on with clients when I'm working with them. And each money block holds a you know complex cluster of beliefs and patterns and emotions across the different levels of consciousness and layers of your human Wi-Fi. And the key is releasing these blocks and changing your relationship with money and ultimately your identity. And so that you can break through your money ceiling and up level, you know, across all areas of life. So I'm going to introduce you to, to six key ones now. The guidance sheet in the comment section is going to talk you through the process that we're going to do together in a second, and I'll guide you through. But just to give you some context around these money blocks. So the first one, which is a common one. So let me know if you've got this one. So number one, have you got this one? Not enough self-love. And what I mean here is that, you know, so many entrepreneurs, we can use our business as a mask to loving themselves or as a way to heal a core wound because of course instinctively we want to say I love myself because we know we consciously know that it's good for us however the subconscious may reveal that there is just some healing to do so you can love yourself more how can I love myself more because when you love yourself at every level of your journey your self-love beliefs guide your actions and business just can become easier and easier and truly the easier it gets the easier it gets the second one is not trusting yourself. So if you don't trust yourself fully, then this, will, this one's going to show up in your business and it will impact your sales. There's a big one, a sneaky one. Whenever we haven't followed through on our word, our subconscious is listening and believes that you won't follow through in the future. So in addition, anywhere that we may have had some uh, previous financial trauma or goal trauma. So things like if there's any... Um, bankruptcy just think of different financial traumas bankruptcy divorce because that can include financial trauma business decisions that haven't perhaps panned out yet things that have happened in childhood perhaps you saw your parents get divorced and then they had some financial trauma whatever it may be or goal trauma what I mean by that is where you you know whatever the intention was you were going for something and then just didn't quite happen as you panned out and it's had an impact on you all of this has a big impact on manifesting and co-creating in the universe. So how we can start to change this, you know, following through on what you say you'll do, even with the small daily tasks, rebuilds that trust in yourself and strengthens your vibration, strengthens the power of your word when you're doing your affirmations in your inner rewiring. So a lack of self-trust is actually a huge reason why entrepreneurs are held back in their business. You know, they might be, afraid to invest afraid to hire afraid to pivot when their soul's been telling them that they need to pivot afraid to launch you know all the things and so then that slows slows down their growth does that resonate anyone recognizing that one like oh I've had this niggle I know I really want to be doing this but I'm just too scared whatever it may be and you know these are big big things aren't they of course you know we all have these decisions to make as we are making decisions for our teams, you know, got the responsibility of paying team members, people that are contracted to you. It There's a responsibility with the decisions that we make. And so our mindset and thinking and vibration around that is abs absolutely key in relation to those, those decisions. And being able to trust ourselves in making those decisions. And trust, of course, is connected to self-love. So if you love yourself, 
you are more likely to follow through on what you say you'll do. So give yourself permission to take action on what you, what you need to get done and then start to increase your self-trust. And that leads us to the third one. And this is a big one, particularly in the online space. So for anyone who has got an online business, it's feeling unsafe to be seen at this new level. Our subconscious will do everything it can to keep ourselves safe. And for thousands of years, it actually wasn't safe to be seen. If you think about our ancestors, you know, depending on which part of the world you're in, whether you would think you'd use the language you know, in Scotland, where I have family members from, it was communities were clans. Um, you may have had your ancestors may have spoken of communities and may have spoken of tribes. Whatever the community was for you, where if you got kicked out, the reality was you would die alone. And so we then have we've got that ancestral programming. And then you've also got any previous programming and experiences you've had, whether it's a teacher laughing at you or ridiculing you in front of everyone in class. As I share that, I remember various stories <laughs> and experiences of my uh, biology teacher. I used to love to get us to stand up when I was very naughty <laughs> when I was about 15 to uh, intend to humiliate us and make us stand at the back of the class and put tea towels on our heads to try and stop us from being being naughty or whatever it may have been you know what what was the impact of those experiences of how you feel safe to be seen any experiences of public speaking and forgetting what you're saying or being judged by the mean girls at school and that ultimately is just being judged for being you. And then, of course, we've got media programming. How are people treated on TV and what is our subconscious and deciding about that? And then the beliefs it's making up about that. Does that make sense? So being seen can feel really dangerous. Then we have the fourth one, allowing your ego to lead. So if the ego wants to lead instead of our higher self, the ego can make us want to push through to growth that we desire instead of allowing the flow and following the bridge of synchronicities. And that can create a lot of trouble and stress. Does that make sense? So just taking that moment to think, oh, have I let my ego lead here? Why am I allowing my, my higher self to, to lead? And we have judging the rich and famous. So what do you instantly think of when you have, when you hear someone has had success beyond their desires? Are there any, any, like this is a really good time to be really honest with yourself. Any thoughts of resentments, judgment, hate, they've got it easier than me. You know, whatever the narrative may be, the subconscious is keeping you safe. So it's not going to allow you to become something that you're judging or hating on. And of course, again, our subconscious is influenced by the media, parental programming, governmental programming, societal programming. So there might be some beliefs lurking in there that you weren't even aware of consciously like I do not hold that belief <laughs> where did that one come from and the media love to put the wealthy on a pedestal and then deliberately bring them down so it doesn't look very safe what about imposter syndrome anybody have, have ever had imposter syndrome so have you ever found yourself and it can bubble up at different points in time and it's always bubbling up for people as they're leveling up and expanding their identity and moving into a new a new version of themselves so perhaps you might have recognized it as resisting closing a big sale or feeling shame because your prices are higher than your colleagues or feeling shame because you've got more success than the people who started before you so you're kind of making it really linear if that resonates then you're familiar with imposter syndrome so those are the six money blocks. I wanted to give you some context there because we're going to muscle test now on a couple of beliefs. And I've got them laid out in the in the uh, document for you. So you can start to see where there may be some beliefs that you weren't aware of. Vibrating in your field, sending out, you know, messages to the universe of, hey, please send me things that are in alignment with this frequency. I'd be most grateful. So we're going to use the Helix method and we're going to use 
In the Helix Method, we use a range of advanced energetic healing and energy psychology manifesting techniques to expand your consciousness and to raise your vibration. One of the techniques we use is muscle testing. So we're going to, which is from applied kinesiology. We're going to use that. And then we're going to use through the power of intention, invocation and breath work, transmute what's not serving you and align to the reality that you desire. Does that sound good? Let me know in the comments if you're ready to do this together. So our Helix Method kinesiology technique is as follows. We're going to activate your connection with your higher self. We're going to create your consciousness of your future self. We're going to do that by muscle testing to find the blocks to release and transmute. We're going to rewire intentionally, letting go what's not serving you. I'm going to create that quantum coherence through the breath work and imprinting. So your head, heart and heart are aligned. And then whilst we're in that energetic state, you're going to live in the energy of the question. I love living in the energy of the question. So this is where we're just asking a question. We're not trying to answer it. It's like a question you're asking from a place of wonder and awe because it's already happened. And I'll give you an example as we get to that piece. You'll be able to really feel into it and then follow the bridge of synchronicities that will open up. Does that sound sound good? And that's the key bit. It's taking the aligned action on what comes through for you. Okay, so. I'm going to invite you to activate your con your connection with your higher self. So to do this, I invite you to breathe in for four, to hold for four and to breathe out for eight. And just to do this three times at your own pace. With the intention of activating your connection with your higher self. So you may choose as you're following this breath to just become aware of your soul star chakra about 18 inches above your head. And then I'm going to just say the invocation for you. You can follow along in your mind's eye or follow along with the wording in the document. So speaking to all levels of my consciousness, I'm setting the intention, I'm creating a clear channel of communication and manifestation between my subconscious, conscious and higher self. So 100% connected and in perfect alignment and all working towards my highest path and purpose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then from this space, I'm going to invite you as we start to create the consciousness of your future self by letting go what's not serving you in your energetic field and then imprinting what is serving, what will serve you. So let's find out if there's any hidden beliefs lurking. Well, there will be. But let's find some. So we're going to do some of these ones from the, the list in the, in the document. So stand with your feet hip width apart, knees relaxed, eyes closed. And I'm going to just invite you, and I'll say these statements out loud so you can just repeat them after me, and then just see if you go forwards or backwards. No judgment, you're just observing. You're just going to make a note of which ones you went forwards on and backwards on. And I'll pop these in the comments below. So to remember, your energy body is going to respond. And well, typically, a forwards is a yes and backwards is a no. So let's muscle test these ones. I'm just popping them in the comments for you. So the first one is, I hide myself in business. Make a note if you get a yes or a no. The second one is, I love myself as a business owner. Let me know if you get a yes or a no. I'm going to keep moving forward. So just make a note of these. You can pop your findings in the comments when we've completed this bit. I trust myself to make profitable business decisions. How about this one? I'm safe to be seen doing energy healing work. My ego often leads the way. I will do whatever it takes to have success. And as I'm reading these out and as you're muscle testing, just inviting you to notice how your body's responding. So you're going forwards and backwards. Do you notice anything different as you're doing this with the different statements? Do you feel cold? Do you feel hot? Do any memories come to mind? Just allow those reflections to come through. I'm 
I will be judged and hated if I am wealthier. I'm ashamed of my success. Here's one that might be lurking. I feel small around successful people. Again, let us know in the comments. What you're finding. Okay, so hopefully you can see that list that I popped there for you. And of course, if you're watching the replay, you can press pause and give yourself a little bit more time to muscle test on, on those beliefs. So we're just doing this at a high level today. So you can get a flavor for what we are up to here. So the key thing, just to recap there, is as you're muscle testing to notice how your body's responding, how is your subconscious speaking to you? Because it will be speaking to you through your body and your energy. You might notice your sway is stronger in some statements you say and less in other statements and so on. All right, okay, so now you're clear what it feels like in your body, or perhaps you might have seen a picture of something as you were um, connecting in with that statement. We're gonna release and transmute this belief through our statement, our invocation and our breath work. So I'm going to say this, I'll say it as a overarching statement and then you can you can fill in the gaps. So I'm going to say it as I'm ready to transmute this belief and I'm going to use the example I hide myself in my business. I transmute, uncreate, delete from all dimensions, planes, times, levels of consciousness. So I'll say it and then you can just follow along. So you can really just focus on the breathing and with your eyes closed, it changes your brainwave states as you're doing this. And you can allow yourself to receive this and experience this. Already feeling good? Already. So inviting you just to take a moment to breathe in for four and to breathe out for four. And you want to do this sitting down if you have been standing up. We're going to say this statement three times. You're going to say it once out loud and then twice internally. So it's like you can hear it as a thought in your head. Okay, so breathing in for four, breathing out for four. I'm ready to transmute this belief. I hide myself in my business. I transmute, uncreate, delete from all dimensions, planes, times and levels of consciousness. Taking a nice deep breath in for four and out for four. Now say this internally. I'm ready to transmute, transmute this belief. I'll use the example, I hide myself in my business. I transmute, uncreate, delete from all dimensions, planes, times, levels of consciousness. Just taking a nice deep breath in and out. And then one more time. So follow along, saying it internally. I'm ready to transmute this belief. I hide myself in my business. I transmute, uncreate, delete from all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. Breathing in for four, breathing out for four. Taking a moment to notice how this is feeling in your body. And of course, if you're watching on the replay, I invite you just to press pause or rewind so you can do any of the other beliefs that you have discovered recommend doing three three today and then we're going to imprint now into your human wi-fi the belief the thought the emotion that you intend to bring yourself into resonance with so this is where just to take a moment to think about, well, what is it that you're wanting to create? So if you've got rid of the belief, let's say I hide myself in my in my business. What do you want to bring in more of? More love. 
more trust? What would you be bringing in? So for this example, I'm going to use, I love myself as a business owner. So we're going to bring, bring that one in. So I'm going to invite you to bring your heart into coherent energy through your breath work. So breathing in for four and breathing out for four. I'm just going to invite you to do that a couple of times. And as you're doing that, just to start to fill up your heart with love. Just allow yourself to feel love. Maybe think of somebody that you love without no, no complications in the relationship. When your heart is full of love, we're going to say this once out loud and then twice internally. I love myself as a business owner. How does that feel, that love for yourself as a business owner? So I feel, how do you feel? You might say, I feel peace. I feel harmony. I feel safe. I choose this across all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. And now I'm going to get you to do it twice internally. So I'll say it out loud so you can follow along. So I love myself as a business owner. I feel peace, harmony, safe. I choose this across all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. I love myself as a business owner. I feel peace, harmony, safe. I choose this across all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. Just notice how you're feeling, allowing yourself to breathe in for form, breathe out for form. And from this space, I invite you to live in the energy of the question of the frequency that we've just activated. So the question is asking it from a place of it's already, this is already your reality. So the question I'm inviting you to live in the energy of today is why am I surrounded by love and abundance? And so you're frequency is asking that question you're not trying to consciously answer it it's just asking it why am i surrounded by love and abundance and in this now moment you can just take a moment to write down any intuitive ideas that come to you but don't worry if you feel like you've got a blank it's all good just allow yourself to think wow this future me is like just asking for a place of curiosity and wonder like why am I surrounded by love and abundance? Let the universe answer through the ideas, the synchronicities. This is the bit that you need to do. This is your responsibility, this bit, is take action on what comes your way. If someone's name pops into your mind, reach out to them. So you get to implement that that will make sense of course you can go back and revisit this for any of the other beliefs that you have found that you want to change I would love to know in the comments how are you feeling and also I'm really excited to hear what resonates for you from this this has been an introduction for you mastering kinesiology for your aligned success you can unlock your subconscious and to be able to really start to master your energetics you can create your new reality with confidence and ease i hope that this has served you thank you so much for joining me and please do come and join us next week in the breakthrough the money silly masterclass because you will absolutely love it and have an immediate energetic shift you'll feel lighter you'll change your vibrational attraction point this this one next week is on the house from me i'll pop the link in the comments below for you as well and if you're ready there are a few ways you can work with me you need to have to have it all and become certified in what I teach and all the advanced techniques that I work with my clients privately and in our programs. And then to be able to share this with your clients as well, come and join us in the Helix Method certification program. We actually have our welcome call tomorrow. 
So you need to be quick to come and join us this round. We'd be love to have you. If you want to, for those of you who want to upgrade your relationship with yourself and others who self-actualize and have more success across all areas of life, then reach out to me about the love codes. We start that on the 20th of March. We're going to run the Wealth Portal live. So I'll be leading you live through our modules on from the 5th of April, where you'll be breaking through the money ceiling in 60 days or less. And if you want to learn how to sell your 3K plus offers with ease so that you make your 10K to 30K months inevitable, then reach out to me about IPC. IPC is our Infinite Prosperity Collective program. It's our spiritual business mastermind. This is for coaches and healers who want to make a bigger impact and to, to grow their businesses towards those 10K to 30K plus consistent months. And if you'd like to learn how to channel the Akashic Records, your soul blueprint, then we've also got our Akashic Record immersions coming up in March. So just reach out to me. Let me know which one you're feeling drawn to. We would love to have you. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is just to give you a heads up on pricing, because it, the pricing for our programs is going up in April. So just thought everyone would like a heads up on that. So if you've been thinking about it, then just reach out to me now and we can get you set up with our, our current pricing. I have got a couple of spots for private clients available as well and one Wealth Portal VIP but where I'll take you through on your own personal Wealth Portal journey over three months. You'll receive eight private 90 minute sessions with me plus box of coaching in between. I've got a super juicy pricing for this and it's that is going to best suit someone who's near six figures, already past six figures, multi six figures. I've only got one spot available for that. So just you'll need to be quick to reach out if you'd like to make that yours. Alrighty. Other than that, I will see you all in the Breakthrough the Money Senior Masterclass next week. Any questions, please do post below. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Sending you lots and lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.